talk about Lyme disease, it's really important to remember that Lyme is only part of the picture. There are also what we call co-infections. For anyone who has dealt with chronic Lyme disease, this is not a new concept and very likely you are very knowledgeable about what co-infections are. But for those who may not understand, co-infection really is an infection that can occur alongside another infection. And in the case of Lyme, we are thinking about a few different specific co-infections. Deer ticks transmit and carry Lyme disease. Probably the most common thing that they carry by far is Lyme disease. However, there are other bacteria and um, different types of organisms that they can transmit. The second most common thing that we see is something called Babesia, which is actually more almost like a parasite. It's, it's more malaria-like than anything else. And so Babesia can infect the red blood cells. One of the, the telltale signs of Babesia is severe fatigue. Now, granted, that's a, a pretty generic symptom. However, Babesia definitely is one to cause that. And it can sometimes contribute to anemia as it can infect and destroy red blood cells. Um, it also can cause uh, what we call day sweats and night sweats. That's a really common uh, thing that we see with Babesia. So anytime there's, there's a diagnosis of Lyme, we're always on the lookout for something like this, like Babesia. So that would be, again, probably the second most common thing we see. Another co-infection that we'll see is something called anaplasmosis. Now, anaplasmosis can be something that we see on its own, just as Babesia can as well. But it's another thing that we also look for when we're looking for Lyme. Now, anaplasmosis has very generic symptoms that are very much similar to Lyme disease, so it's really hard to tell the two apart just by looking at someone. More often than not, from what we understand, anaplasmosis tends to be more of an acute infection and not as likely from what I've seen to cause a chronic infection, though I have seen on some blood tests IgM antibodies come back positive for anaplasmosis in cases with people that have Lyme disease. So I definitely think that there's that possibility that anaplasmosis could be an ongoing issue along with Lyme. The treatment, however, is the same. And so that's what makes it really nice is that when we're treating Lyme, we're really treating the anaplasmosis on top of that. So even though it's a co-infection that we see, it's not one that we're as concerned about because we know that we can treat it with the treatment for Lyme. Whereas Babesia, Yes, there is some overlap there too, and as far as treatment goes, but sometimes we need to be a little more specific. Sometimes we will use anti-malarial medications specific to Babesia that can, can uh, kill that, uh, that particular organism better. Um, another one that I think about a lot is Bartonella. And so this is another one that, again, if you're familiar with chronic Lyme, you've probably heard the term Bartonella before. Bartonella is a bacterial infection that we believe deer ticks can transmit. Now, I will say that it's not something that we've definitively proven at this point, but there is some evidence out there that shows that, that deer ticks likely carry Bartonella. However, we also know that Bartonella comes from a number of other different sources that are very common. For instance, a, a cat scratch can transmit Bartonella. A number of other biting insects can transmit Bartonella. And Bartonella can, as well as any of the other ones, cause an acute infection on its own. And sometimes we, we may have heard the term uh, cat scratch fever. That's the specific Bartonella infection that comes from a cat scratch that causes an acute infection. It's pretty significant and it does, in a lot of cases, require some hospitalization for, for treatment. In a case of chronic Bartonella, it may or may not be a true co-infection. It may actually be what we call an opportunistic infection, meaning that someone that has Lyme disease also has an activation of Bartonella. That Bartonella may have, came, may have come from the tick, it might have come from something else. But either way, that bacteria is causing problems along with Lyme. In fact, one of the theories is that Lyme actually will kind of called a Bartonella to action, will give this dormant bacteria that, that your body is already harboring an opportunity to proliferate and, and become more active. So I do find that Bartonella is one of those really common infections that we see alongside Lyme and super important that it is addressed and treated. 
Bartonella can be also treated with some of the classic treatments for Lyme disease. However, again, there are some more specific ones too. One of the ones that I'll use more commonly for Bartonella is rifampin. It's an antibiotic. It also treats Lyme as well and can cover some of the Lyme biofilms. But another one that we use for, for Bartonella is methylene blue. And specifically, and there was a, I did a video on this a while back uh, as far as some specific treatments for Bartonella. So uh, we can put a link to that here too, and you can go ahead and, and take a look at that one if you want more specifics on, on treating Bartonella. Other ones that we think about are Ehrlichiosis, Rickettsia, and some of these are more, um, they can be transmitted by more than deer ticks. They can be transmitted by typical wood ticks as well. I will say that I don't see those ones as commonly but there are ones that we look at and that we think about. And then we can make a much bigger video on some of the other things that we see alongside Lyme. And, and we will go into that um, in future videos here too, but we also have to be thinking about what else could be going on. Not every single thing that a patient is feeling is simply Lyme or a co-infection. There are environmental toxicities we have to think about. There have to be uh, we have to be more holistic in our thinking as far as what kind of things can bring the immune system down or cause some inflammation in the body that might be making it harder to treat Lyme. Molds, for instance, heavy metals, for instance. Um, our, our mental health is important. I mean, that's sometimes Lyme causes us to have some mental health difficulties, but sometimes those mental health difficulties make it harder to treat Lyme. There are studies upon studies that show someone's frame of mind can really make a big impact on their immune system, their overall health. Your stress level plays a part in this as well. Your diet, your sleep patterns. So there's so many different things we have to think about. But today I just wanted to touch on the fact that when you're treating Lyme, you have to make sure that you're not forgetting about everything else that could potentially be there as well. If you treat Lyme and you're treating co-infections and you're addressing these other factors, your chances of getting better are much, are much bigger, much stronger.